Manchester United nil, Tottenham Hotspur three, and the United Twins need to speak about it. United, United. Blessings to everybody inside, and including yourself, CM. Hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. Share it to your friends and frenemies. I wasn't 100% sure how this game would go. I was in a mixed mood for the vibe check, but my goodness, even this performance, even that result deeply exceeded my expectations of garbage. From the very beginning, bar a period of the game where there were about 20 to 25 minutes remaining, Manchester United were dominated. Spurs implemented a high press which suffocated us couldn't play out from the back for the most part and was constantly giving away possession of the football. That in fact is what led to Brennan Johnson's opening goal after three minutes. Heavy touch by Rashford after a little ping pong action. Mickey van der Ven picks up the ball in Spurs' half, glides into a pocket of space where about four Manchester United players surrounded him but couldn't do a single thing as he entered our area drives a low left footed pass towards the back post where an in form Johnson knocked home his fourth consecutive goal in all competitions. Just a nightmare start for everybody involved but unfortunately that only set the tone for a somber Sunday service. Our only outlet in this game essentially was regaining possession and unleashing our wide plays as quickly as possible due to both Pedro Porro and Destiny Udogi or Jed Spence pushing high which left just the centre backs and wide spaces exposed in an ideal scenario. There needed to be excellence in execution but we didn't have Bret Hart on our side. Quality and end product which has been a massive issue when it comes to final third conversations reared its ugly head again. We didn't have a bucket load of chances either so all, look, it all counts, even when there's a sniff of goal. Instead, especially in that first half, Spurs pushed and pushed for more and it really could have been game over from early. Brendan Johnson hit the post. Timo Werner had two good 1v1 chances throughout the game and both were halted by Andre Onana and Werner's poor finish in playing a part two. Another one was Romero's overhead kick. And that's just a, a handful of chances that I can actually remember in this moment. Another thing I'm sure there will be a lot of discourse about is Bruno Fernandes' sending off just before half time. I didn't personally agree with the red card in real time at all. Right now, after seeing it a couple times, I still don't agree with it, but can understand the rationale. What I spotted out initially was Bruno slipping on his way to challenge James Madison. What incriminates the club captain no less was his adjustment mid slide which positioned his studs higher and in a dangerous position when you think about how referees factor in potential risks of injuring opponents. Even then with, with a slight connection if anything I found it hard to fathom why it was given as a straight red as it happened. Let us know what you thought in the comments but anyway would it have really mattered? With the way the game took shape already, I'm afraid that team was cooked from the very beginning. Conceding early in the second half, replicating actions of the previous period, and I mean, missing out on 50-50s, weak if anything, lost to the ball, unreactive, as, as Brennan Johnson and Dayan Kuliszewski are allowed to break free down that right-hand side. Kuliszewski eventually finishes via a deflected cross, but it was all too easy once more. An example of how much this Manchester United performance lacked in terms of competitive spirit on the day. And it was pitiful. Even their third goal, easy front post glance for Papsar and Solanke goes in between defenders to tap an easy one home. Simple errors leading to painful punishments. If you ever wanted to see an image to sum up just how bad this performance was as a whole, have a look at Old Trafford towards the end of the game. Fans desperate to evacuate the premises like a fire drill had been called into action. And perhaps they went and truly had enough after United's small flurry of hope was permanently put to an end.
I don't quite know what else to say about the game itself. When you're in the thick of things, groups need to stick together. Dig in and, and that was a performance where across the board, everybody was consistent in one thing and that was failing to execute, mm. which of course eradicated their pathway to success. Another thing is I'm sick and tired of the excuses and, and games that we see online. Just keep it real at this point because all now I'm seeing people talk about how these players have sat previous managers. But hold on a second. I did quick maths and was like 11 of the 16 fielded players today have been at the club or have only played under Eric Ten Hag. Hmm. So can we just stop the madness, please? Hmm. Just keep it real and say what you see. Less of the substanceless or, or biased arguments. This isn't a, a good moment for both the manager and players alike. Coming off two draws, now a crushing defeat at home going into Porto this coming Thursday and Aston Villa on the weekend who have a tough midweek assignment against Bayern Munich in the Champions League. Not to mention they'll be disappointing with their 2-2 draw away at Ipswich carrying that into next weekend's encounter. On a brighter note, shout out to Man United women getting their second victory of the Women's Super League campaign 1-0 against Everton and it was a difficult game to navigate. We scored early through Grace Clinton, 2-2 two two for her now and after, the game really turned into a dogfight. Rough and rugged and we had to dig in. Whether the storm at times as we did get lucky, could have conceded for sure but didn't and eventually saw out the game. Liverpool in the League Cup on Wednesday and it was supposed to be Chelsea on the Sunday before UEFA released their Women's Champions League schedule causing it to be postponed due to there only being a two-day gap between our game and their opening fixture against Real Madrid. Overall, a good start to the season. Two wins from two thus far. Of course, there are areas to clean up. Players still adapting to a new club, new roles, getting to understand their teammates and, and not to forget, as we mentioned before, previous videos coming off a, a tough campaign. It's important for everybody to be on the same page again for this new season, setting the standards early and not allowing yourself to slip, unlike their male counterparts who just can't refrain from such a thing. Feels like this video is definitely going to be longer than what we've done recently, and it feels appropriate. Hundred. There will be noise. I've checked socials. I'm seeing the disgruntled ten hard chatter, and I'm more than hear it as well. What side of the spectrum are you on, twenty twos? Is ten hard getting closer to entering the room of termination, or should time be allowed for him and his squad to, to turn things around? tongue tied while it's wild that we're back here Bro. and eric as you would expect condemned the lack of resilience shown today in the face of adversity once again but more than ever right now actions speak louder than words and when visually all you see is up and down up and down up and down the, the recurring cycle of false pretenses it's hard to stay on side it's hard to believe that change could be around the corner. It's hard even to be optimistic about what's around the corner. Perhaps we can both receive a different perspective by looking in the comment section. Get your comments in. Hit that like button if you've reached this stage of the video. Shout out to you. Subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time, can't guarantee to be a great time. We'll see you lots in a bit.